Hi there. If you've been watching my videos, you'll see that I've been finding these geoglyphs uh, across much of North America. So I started to wonder, what about South America? I mean, we know the Nazca lines are there, and uh, but I was wondering about different kinds of glyphs. Maybe there would be uh, glyphs more like what I see in North America. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I found in South America. Uh, if you look at this picture of South America, you can see the Amazon basins, that dark area in the upper part. And then you have all these areas that are cleared. They're part of the forest jungle area that's really light colored. And that's all cleared and that's all agricultural. So what I'm talking about, I'm going to be looking at mostly this area to the right of this line on the east slope of the Andes all the way out to the Atlantic Ocean. You zoom in a little bit more on that little corner of the Andes, you see this big cleared area and this is all agricultural fields. If you move in, you start to see all the grid pattern. And zoom in closer, you see that they form these fancy radiating patterns along with all these other grid patterns. There's lots of it. Goes forever many 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 fields like this and at the center of these radiating lines there's a reservoir and in this case the uh, towns grow up around those reservoirs and um, what this allows you to do is you can take water from that reservoir and send it out the ditches along these radiating lines and water basically this whole square from one point in the middle there's some more of it. I'll show you. It's pretty elaborate, pretty wild, and very psychedelic. And it's meant to look psychedelic. And imagine these fields planted with different crops, uh, different colors, brightly colored yellows and reds and greens and who knows what else. And not only just these radiating fields, but you get also this uh, other funky patterns that look like uh, glyphs. Some more of it. Some more of it. You can notice all the sort of grid patterns around the edges, really fancy, precise, rectangular fields. And close up again of the center of one of these features and how a town has grown up um, in the middle. Some more of it showing again some of the the grids and the rectangular striped patterns and it's uh, similar to what I found in Texas. So let's look at that. These are in South Texas. Again here's a square with a radiating field pattern going out from the center. Again, a reservoir in the center. Here's another one. See the reservoir in the center. You could water all your fields by sending water out from this one reservoir. Again, a whole bunch of radiating lines. And then all the patterns in the landscape that you see there are part of the prehistoric glyph and field system. So let's uh, go back to Brazil and look at some more things there. This is really wild looking land here. All agricultural fields. The dark areas are where the forest have been, has been left intact. So those are trees. And these uh, dark areas form different glyphs. You can see uh, maybe a guy with a cape, uh, some birds, different faces. If you can see it in there, they were probably trying to make it look like that. This is really like looking at the clouds and making faces. And I think that's where they got a lot of their inspiration. Some more patterns. Again, some pretty strange looking land. So you look at this kind of stuff and let's go look in Arkansas. Same kind of thing where what you might think are historic 
agricultural fields are actually part of the prehistoric landscape. People aren't farming this land today. They're uh, living on it or they're um, using it for ranching and things like that. Here's some more. And as you see, the what would be considered ice and these glyphs are usually uh, these reservoirs. And if we go back to Brazil, see the same pattern of land with uh, reservoirs in each one of these little plots of land. And this kind of system requires you to manually uh, water the fields from those reservoirs. And that's why I know this isn't uh, historic because I don't know of historic people actually uh, using sort of manual irrigation systems. There's some contour lines and another glip to the right. If you turn it around, it looks kind of like a, an animal with a long nose wearing a hat. Some bird glyphs. Some more bird glyphs. Uh, some contour lines. And then this one that looks like a man with a device strapped to his waist and his shoulders on his, basically on his back and he's holding a couple weird devices in his hands. So let's look at some other types of fields there. In Brazil, in the rainforest there, um, these really, really psychedelic looking fields. If you zoom in, I think each of those areas uh, probably has stacks of glyphs again. The dark areas, the forest is left intact. The dark areas are the fields. Really fancy. So let's look at some of the grid patterns out there. Just amazing. Such precise work. Um, it's hard to describe why somebody would go to so much effort to make all this look like this rather other than they were using a landscape as a as a big artistic expression there's again some really fancy looking grids if you go in close you see a double canal system running down the each side of these things uh, each field has a basin um, you can see even the diagonal white lines going across that they use to probably uh, measure in their right triangles to make sure they get everything square. Again, really fancy patterns. Very similar to what you see in South Texas, this is. Here's some fields I was going to show you. Still have some vegetation in them. If you zoom in close, you can see all the nice uh, furrows. Um, they, could, they could plow the land very precisely and straight and make it look uh, almost like modern machine farmed areas, but they're not. Here again, very, very fancy stylized uh, rectangles with uh, dark squares in the middle. More of it. Everything is gridded off. The whole landscape is gridded off. Some more. See again, double canals running down the sides of all these uh, fields here. And then this, uh, it looks almost like a painting on the landscape. And you see some of this actually in the Mesilla Valley of New Mexico. And some remnants of it in the fields there, believe it or not. Um, I don't know if they were trying to do this or if this was some sort of sketch where they were going to... Uh, make more permanent field glyphs out of this area. So let's look at some other types of features. This area is all contoured in, uh, looks like topo lines. It's almost like someone drew a topo map uh, actually on the landscape. If you look in close at these lines, they're a dark little ditch by, uh, with white berms around them or, uh, 
basically the exposed soil. So here's some more of that contoured land. These are look a little older. They grew in, have vegetation growing in the little ditches. Um, again, probably forming some sort of glyphs. So I'm going to look at another area. This is in the Andes. Uh, you can see this red and white area in the middle here. It's all been disturbed. Kind of turn it around so you're facing west. You can see that nice precise lines uh, defining this area. The hillside is red. Um, I don't know if you dig deeper you get the white or if they brought the white in. <clears throat> they were using these colors to, to form these glyphs. Here again, looks like they removed the vegetation down to the red soil to form these glyphs. And again, this is all agricultural. These are fields. Pretty uh, clear glyph on the left there of some sort of tower, it looks like. So again, you can see this uh, reddish area, the line at the top and the bottom where they disturbed this and kind of just cut this panel of glyphs out of the side of the hill. And it goes on for miles and miles. So here was one of the more uh, concise glyphs that I could make out of guys rowing a boat to the right. Um, get a little closer there, you can see it. It's a uh, whole thing's about a mile long, the boat. But you can also see the green part to the left of the boat. Um, that's a drainage. It's again agricultural. You can see fields and uh, lines in there when you get in close. Uh, it forms a figure of a guy kind of pushing the boat. There's kind of his body outline and then I put some lines going up in his headdress. If you zoom out that headdress keeps going. Again that's all agricultural fields as you go up into the next valley. Again it's all uh, the same kind of thing and they're farming probably glyphs out of these uh, green areas where the vegetation grows. If you go in close you can see either the ditches or, or walls, something that's defining those fields. Also in this valley if you get up on the side of the hill you see another area where it's been cleared and glyphs have been left in the, probably in both negative and positive on the side of the hill there. So if we go look at this reddish and white area that's been cleared and you turn it and look kind of facing to the east, you can see that this forms like a, <clears throat> a big bird's wing like that. The eye is a, a big reservoir like with a lot of these glyphs. This, uh, this side, this wing is eight miles long. And there is what I suppose is supposed to be the whole thing. The left kind of gets hard to see because of the overlap of uh, two photos there. So I'm not quite sure how it was supposed to look. So there you go. Some amazing things up in the Andes. Let's take one more look back in the Amazon Basin. This is at the very southwest edge of the Amazon Basin. Again, you see the Andes. To the right, this is facing south, and I believe those big clear areas are again two really large glyphs. Kind of to the right is a bird, to the left is a man. Um, you zoom in closely, the man is comprised of some fairly established uh, agricultural fields. The bird looks kind of browner and stuff. You get in there and you can see that some of that area has just been cleared and maybe they weren't done establishing all the, the fields that would uh, define the bird. I don't know if they're fighting or if the man's handing something to the bird, not sure. But anyway, you have to think big to, to look at this because that line there, that's 400 miles long. So this glyph would basically be about 400 miles tall by about 600 miles wide. 
And you might think, well, that's just crazy. They would, they would never build something that big. But when you get out there and you look, you see how precisely this whole place was uh, gridded off. And how they were uh, basically mapping the whole landscape. So let's look again at South America. You go all the way down to the south tip, you have the same thing. I see grid, grid, gridded off land all the way down to the southern tip of Argentina, um, all the way up to the northern part of South America. It's all the same thing. These really, really fancy uh, agricultural fields forming these glyphs or forming uh, all these really fancy square and rectangular patterns. Um, what am I to think of this? I don't know. I guess the, the same people that occupied North America went south and occupied South America too. And that's uh, something I don't know if we've ever really looked at uh, in archaeology is, was it really just like one group of people that expanded into all the Americas here. I don't know. I think so.